All right. Um, here's our video on experimental and theoretical probability. So what we're really going to focus on this video is just understanding the difference between um, what is going to be classified as experimental and then what would be classified as theoretical. Um, essential question. How can you determine an experiment from what should happen? All right. Um, so first I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, what is experimental probability. So experimental probability, it's a probability that is based on repeated trials of an experiment. So that is experimental probability. So it's kind of easy to remember because it's, you know, it's got the word experiment in it. Um, so it's when you are um, trying something out um, a bunch of different times. So when you roll that dice 20 different times and you find out the probability of, um, you know, getting a six, that is an experimental probability. Um, how you find out the experimental probability of an event? Well, you take um, the number of times supposed to be an of um, the event occurs so how many times you actually did roll a six um, and you divide that by the number of total trials so how many times you did roll the die okay so it is pretty key here, guys, to remember. So it's how many times something does occur over the total times you tried that experiment. Um, all right. So we're going to look at an example here um, on how to find experimental probability. So the bar graph here shows the results of rolling a number cube uh, 50 times. So this is what this is telling us. I have um, my six possible events that can occur, my six outcomes, and then this is times rolled. So how many times did I actually roll um, a one, a two, a three, four, five, six? All right. I'm going to try and find what is the probability or what is the experimental probability of rolling an odd number. Now, we just kind of know, okay, rolling an odd number on a number cube, I should get about one half of the time. But is that true? Did that actually happen in this experiment? So let's take a look. I rolled a one right here. So this tells me I rolled a one. I look over here, I rolled a one 10 times. Oop. I rolled a three eight times. And then I rolled a five. Well, it's in between 10 and 12. So what is in between 10 and 12? That is 11. So in total, I rolled an odd 29 times. So uh, the probability of rolling an odd, well, how many times did I actually roll that odd? 29, okay, over the number of times that I just rolled the cube in general was 50. So my prob so my probability is 29 over 50. And if I want to figure out the decimal version of that, 29 divided by 50, well, that gives me 0.58, which is 58. So if I see, I'm actually a little bit higher than 50%, um, right? Um, so I actually rolled an odd um, more often than I rolled an even. 
Okay. Um, how to make a prediction using um, experimental probability. So a prediction is something you can um, so you can guess will happen in the future. That's just the general definition of what a prediction is. Not really math related, but um, I can also use experimental probability to try and see to make a prediction about um, trends in the future. So if I find out it rains um, two out of the last 12 days in March, okay, if this continues, um, how many rains would you expect then in April? Well, um, I know my probability of rain is 2 out of 12. I can reduce that to 1 6. And reducing is good just because it makes our number smaller to begin with. Um, okay. So what I'm going to try and see is, so if I have, um, so I know one out of every six days it's going to rain. Okay. And there are 30 days in April. So one out of six, um, or one six times 30 gives me five. So that's my answer. So my prediction is that um, it will rain five days in April. And I can just use that probability of March. And then also really, I mean, what I kind of did, did here, it is a proportion. I just didn't write it fully out. But you can use that proportion there too. too. Um, a clothing store. A uh, company at a clothing store company, an inspector finds five defective pairs in jeans in a shipment of, whoop, it's trying to circle and that didn't work, in a shipment of 200. So, again, if this trend continues, uh, about how many pairs of jeans would you expect to be defective, let's say in a shipment of 5,000? Well, I know the probability of a defect happening. Is five over? Oh, that is not a five. That's a little bit better, but not great. It's five over two hundred. Uh, so that reduces down to uh, one over forty. All right. So again, same thing I just did above. I'm going to take one over forty, and I'm going to times it by my new shipment amount. Because I know one out of every four genes is going to be defective. So that means in a shipment of 5,000, I would see about 125 pairs of genes that was defective. Okay. All right. So moving on. Sorry, flipping my paper on. All right, now we're going to start talking about theoretical probability. I just talked a lot about experimental. Um, now we're going to talk about the theoretical. So when all possible outcomes are um, equally likely, uh, the theoretical probability of an event, um, it is the ratio of the, and I'm going to, kind of didn't give you um, a lot of room here, so I'm going to shorthand that number, is the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. Oh, this is just not working out well. All right, let me go slower and hopefully my pen will work a little bit better. Okay, main thing here, okay, this is the exact same as probability. So every time you guys have been finding probability so far, you've been finding the theoretical probability. Um, so this is theoretical probability is the exact same that you took notes on yesterday. So again, Number of favorable outcomes. 
So how many do you have that you actually want to occur? That's supposed to be a C. Oh, my C's and S's are just not happening. Sorry. Over number of possible. All right, I'm not even going to try and write outcomes because that's just not going well. Okay. So let's look at an example. Um, you randomly choose one of the letters shown. What is the theoretical probability of choosing ah, a vowel? So first, what are my favorable outcomes? So what are all my vowels I have um, in here? Here are all my vowels. I have an E, an O, and I do have a second E, and I'm going to count that E twice because there are two of them in those blocks. So I could pick either E. So probability of a vowel. There's three vowels I could choose from. And then, so that's my numerator and my denominator is how many blocks there are in total. Well, there are seven blocks in total. So you can, guys, just leave your probability, oh, sorry, as three sevenths. You don't need to really find the decimal version. I don't know what is happening. Okay, hopefully it's, that stops. Um, theoretical probability um, of winning a bobblehead when spinning the prize wheel is one sixth. Uh, the wheel has three bobblehead section. So how many sections are on the wheel in total? Well, so this one I'm not actually finding the probability. I'm giving the probability, but I'm going to use that probability to find something else out. So the probability of the bobblehead is 1 6. I'm giving that in the problem. Um, and I know, right, that I have one out of six chances of hitting a bobblehead, and I know that there are three sections, so that means I need to find out how many sections there are total. So, again, proportions. We still are using a lot of proportions in this unit. So I found out 18. There are 18 sections on the wheel. All right, we just got one. I, this this last one is going to be kind of comparing this theoretical versus experimental together. So here's a no, different bar graph, again, showing rolling a number cube. This time it's rolled 300 times. So what's the, so this one, what's the experiment of experimental probability of rolling an odd? So again, I'm going to look at 1, 3, and 5, 48 plus 50 plus 49. I'm going to add up all the times I rolled an odd. I get 147. So my experimental probability of rolling an odd was 147 over 300. So how does this compare to the theoretical probability? Well, I know the theoretical probability of an odd okay, is 3 over 6 or one half. So what I'm looking to see is I'm seeing that um, 47 over 300, that is that is close uh, to 150 over 300. And 150 over 300 does reduce down to one half. So what I see is that um, the theoretical and experimental are close. Okay, and this will be a tidbit for, you know, my folks that actually listen to the video. Um, the more uh, you do 
the more times you do on an experiment, the closer your probability gets. So the more times I roll this die, the closer my experimental is going to become to my theoretical. Um, but last but not least, just kind of tidbit to know at the end, theoretical probability, again, is what should happen. So it's should. An experimental is what does happen. All right, that is it for these notes. Come into class with questions, and we'll be working a lot with experimental and probable, experimental and theoretical.